<laughs> what I'm holding in my hand right here is one of nature's most overlooked gems. And I can't wait to show you just how to eat this wonderful treasure. This is a chestnut and it's Christmas time. And what better time to learn how to roast chestnuts over an open fire and why you should and what they taste like. Oh my word. I can't wait to share this with you. <laughs> Stick around. Earlier this year, I happened to have listed for sale a little town called Water Valley here in Tennessee. And one of the most special parts of that town was the chestnut tree that absolutely made me fall in love with chestnuts. Every time I would show the town, I would go home with at least a little handful of chestnuts that I had to peel all by themselves and eat raw, fresh off the ground like you're not supposed to do, but they were so amazing. A couple of Christmases ago though, a friend in, of mine and I roasted chestnuts for the first time. And I will tell you, you'll never be the same if you haven't tried it once. <laughs> so today I'm gonna talk you through just why you might wanna learn how to do it and how easy it is. We'll do it here in just a minute. But some of the things that I learned about the chestnut tree just really astounded me. I wanted to tell you about them first. Uh, first of all, it's a beautiful tree. It's related to the beech tree and was one of the most prolific and prominent trees in North America at one time until a blight came through and you wouldn't believe it, but three to four billion chestnut trees all were killed off in that blight. So there are not that many left here in America like there used to be. If you go back even just a hundred years though, you'll have noticed that many of the old barns that are that old or old log cabins were built with this fantastic chestnut wood that was hard and sturdy and beautiful. And you just don't see it anymore, but that's where it all, it was all used regularly back then. And now we have very few of the chestnut trees left. If you find one, absolutely treasure it. And I wanna tell you a couple of reasons why. First of all, the chestnut is one of the, it is the only nut that you will find anywhere on the in the world that is full of vitamin C. I think that's pretty incredible. And very few of them taste as good. Now, you'll hear varying stories. Some people say absolutely do not eat raw chestnuts. Other people say it's fine. But there is plenty of tannic acid in it. And so there are reasons why you would want to go ahead and roast them or, or cook them in some way. And I'll tell you a couple of different ways you can do it just in case you don't have a fireplace or any means to roast them. You could also do something else. But these nuts are seemingly impossible to get to. In fact, the chestnut tree has these beautiful sawtoothed leaves and it makes these what look like baby porcupines growing on the tree. They look like burrs. I think they're called burrs. And they get so heavy, filled with several nuts nestled inside of those burrs that they finally fall off the tree and down onto the ground. And if you walk across that area of the yard, you're gonna be stepping on a whole bunch of little baby porcupines or what look like them. But those all have little um, openings that kind of splay back and hide the hidden treasures inside. And often you're going to see three chestnuts, sometimes four, sometimes two, nestled, just cocooned in there, tied up against one another. So that's why most chestnuts are always gonna have one flat side and then one curved side because they were nestled and came together as a package deal with another chestnut or two in that little burr that fell from the tree. Once you are not scared anymore of those little green porcupines on the ground, you're going to pick them up very carefully or with gloves on and harvest the chestnuts out of them. And they're still an incredibly hard shell. Now, if you get them fresh, like I was talking about earlier this year that I was picking them up, you, you will find when they are very fresh, you can put your fingernail right through that hard brown shell of them and start peeling it back and it peels rather easily and you have a wonderful nut, white fleshy nut in there. However, very quickly that hardens into a very, very hard solid surface. So let's get into how to roast them and I'm gonna talk about several different ways you can do it. You are not limited to just the way I'll show you today, but 
the first thing that you want to do is acquire some. Each of these bags, just so you know, are two pounds. It's easiest to find big, delicious, fresh ones from Europe now because if you don't have your own chestnut tree to harvest from or you don't have a neighbor or friend that does, you'll want to buy some online probably. And if you get them just right, you'll find that you can get them pretty inexpensively. They're going to come just beautiful they look like jewels, but they definitely need washed. So I'm going to find a good sieve. You find whatever you have that can work. And I'm just gonna pour these in here and we're gonna take and wash them under cold water in the kitchen. And I'll be right back to show you how to roast up these beautiful chestnuts. Once you've got your chestnuts good and clean, you're going to wanna examine them because you don't want any that have wormholes and they are notorious for having little wormholes, just like acorns, if you're familiar with how those often have that little tiny pinprick hole through them that says a worm has made its way in. You don't want those. Also, if they're discolored, if they're rough shaped, or if they're broken, you don't want those. We want just the perfect ones that are shiny, they are solid, there's no, nothing about them that would cause us anything to worry about, okay? Those are the ones you wanna keep. And I know it seems like a waste to throw the rest of them away, but there's gonna be some sort of animal that you have around the, the house that hopefully is gonna love eating them the other way. All right, get them clean, get them sorted, and then you're gonna to want to find yourself a good cutting board. And this is one I've got. I'm just gonna put it right here on my knees so you can see a close-up of how I do this. But we're going to take each nut, and thankfully, remember how I told you each one has a flat side to it? Almost without exception. You're gonna put that on your cutting board and find yourself a good knife, which I did have one here somewhere. You're gonna have a good knife that's very sharp, and don't let the kids do this unsupervised. Some folks like to cut an X right there in the, the nub and the end of it uh, that's kind of discolored, that's kind of the head of it, I suppose. Um, another way that's a little bit easier and less likely to cut anybody's fingers off is to just cut one slit straight across that fat part of the meat. And you're trying to just get through the shell, not all the way down into the white meat because we're, we're wanting it to just roast well and if we don't cut a slit, they will explode. <laughs> you don't want any exploding chestnuts. So there's the first one and I've given it a little slit here. Try not to dig into the white flesh, like I said. Let me cut some more for you. I put my fingers on each side, just like you see there, and then cut this way, just so that I protect myself from any kind of danger. And there I've got just a nice full slit all the way across. What's going to happen when we roast these is that's gonna plump up and so it's easier for us to just peel it right off like that and get to the white flesh inside. Um, but this is what you're looking for. I'll go ahead and cut a bunch more of these and then I'll meet you back here when it's time for us to roast these in the fire. Once you've got plenty of them cut like this, and, and let me say one more thing about these. So of course you want the ripest and the plumpest, but you don't wanna to wait too long because chestnuts quickly dry out. And I'll tell you, the nut inside can get just as hard as that rocky hard shell on the outside. So within 10 days of you picking them up and having them be fresh on the ground, you wanna be doing something with them like cooking them to make them edible, all right? Then once you've cooked them, you do really kind of want to eat them within 10 days of that too, because you don't want rock hard nuts to eat. You want that amazing product that comes from this that is nothing like you'll try anywhere else. Just in case the nuts that you pick up though are small and perhaps you're not sure how old they are and you're kind of wondering if they're gonna be nice and plump like you would like them to be, one thing you can do is soak them for an hour to even 24 hours. Some people soak them in water before they roast them. I put three of them in here already slid, as you can see, ready for us to roast today, just so we can see if there's any variation of difference. But I'll tell you, these that I've gotten from Europe are very plump, they're very fresh, and they're perfect for roasting. But in the event that you need to, know that you can soak them for up to 24 hours once you've got that slit in them, 
just to get all of the juiciness you can possibly get infused into them before you roast, okay? So with no further ado, let's go ahead and go to the next step, which they're clean, they're cut, they're ready to go. Now we need to roast them. And if you're from France or Italy, I suppose, you probably have your own chestnut roasting pan. Unlike, unlike many of us prep stutters over here in the US, I envy you, but that's not something I even probably have room for. And this is such a treat. I don't do it often enough to need a roasting pan that's just for chestnuts or that special Italian chestnut knife that you can purchase. Those are also available online and I'll put a link down below if you really want to get fancy with this. What I'm going to be using is what I would use in an emergency. If I am foraging for, for wonderful chestnuts, I've found a tree and I need to cook them, obviously I would in a, in a real emergency, I'd put them in the coals just like this. Just so you know, I would put a cut in them so that they don't explode, but I would put them right in the coals. What we're gonna do today though is take heavy duty tin foil or aluminum foil, I guess is what you call it. I've just cut a square here and I'm going to, to dump these out that I'm not using here. I'm just gonna set those right back there where they came from. I'm taking a, a sieve that's made of stainless steel so it's able to go into that fire. And um, you could use even a cast iron pan those don't have holes, but what you're looking for ideally is some sort of a pan that has little holes in it. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this right into here and we're gonna stab some holes in the bottom of it and roast our chestnuts right in this with this inside of it. I have one of my grandpa's old tools that he used for leather working and so I'm going to use that and just stab some holes right through the bottom of this tin foil so it has good ability to get the heat all the way through to those nuts that we're putting inside of it. All right we're ready to put them in. Now you're going to want as close to you as possible to just one layer across the bottom or have them just resting against each other, like almost a semi-double layer, but you don't want them piled up, otherwise the heat won't get all the way to where it needs to be. So as I'm putting them in here, I'll show you here in just a minute, and we're just gonna try and give them as much space as they can. Perfect. All right, there's just one layer, see that in there? And I'm going to go ahead and close up this top so it kind of helps steam them. They've still got just a little bit of the water on them from when I rinsed them. Now I'm just going to close up this top. We're gonna to put them over preferably hot coals. A bed of hot coals is much better than an open fire uh, with the flames coming up. So unlike the song that says open fire, remember a bed of hot red coals is a much better option for these. So let me get that prepared and we'll just set them right next to the open fire. You see we've closed up that aluminum foil on the top so they kind of steam just a little bit and we're going to let them roast anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes depending on how large the chestnuts are. Ours are pretty large today so I'm going to expect that it might take as much as 20 minutes but what you'll hear is kind of a, a little bit of a popping sound as they kind of burst open those shells just a little bit and you'll know that yeah it's getting close to being done. You'll also smell a wonderful aroma that's kind of like smoky, um, I don't know how to explain it but very smoky tasting. You almost think you're tasting some sort of smoked meat or bacon. It's just amazing that, that's, that that taste comes from a nut and my mouth is watering reminding, remembering that. If you don't have a fireplace, you could absolutely do this on your outdoor grill. Same exact process. In fact, you probably have one of those baskets for grilling vegetables for your outdoor grill. Go ahead and do it in that. And you wanna heat the grill up to about 400 degrees to get this to, to do just exactly the same process out on an outdoor grill, whether it's gas or charcoal. Um, also, you can boil them. And I boiled some earlier today just because I wanted to contrast to see how much different that was. And they turned out absolutely spectacular. 
I did already eat them, so I can't show you what they look like when they're boiled, but you'll be able to see these here in just a minute. But I was intrigued because when you, when you peel the shell off and um, see the inner flesh, once you've boiled them, uh, you boil them for about 20 minutes, right with the same exact process. You're gonna split it just like this, put them in the pan, boil it for 20 minutes, and that water turns this really dark, brilliant, beautiful red. Uh, in fact, I saved just a little bit of that water to show you because I was so intrigued. I mean, it's almost like a burgundy color. Do you see that in there? Anyway, I just wanted to show you that beautiful red that it turned out. These have been roasting probably for about five or eight minutes and it's time for us to do the first shake. You want to kind of shake and get them so that they're not just all roasting with the bottoms down next to those hot coals and never ever turned around. So if you need to get something that's going to help you touch that hot, go ahead and do it. But at least give them a good shake a couple of times in there. You see I'm just giving it a little shake so that they get stirred up in there so we don't just have the bottom's hot and nothing else. All right, I'm putting them back in. Also, you can do it in the oven. I've done it about twice that way and they turned out fantastic. So you'd follow the same protocol that we've done so far. Just spread them evenly and thinly, one layer out on a big cookie sheet and put them in your oven at about 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're going to let them roast for anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes just until you start seeing them just burst a little. Take them out of the oven. You'll want to let them rest for about 10 minutes before you go ahead and taste them the first time, okay? Now my mouth is watering thinking about these. These are almost done. While those are finishing, you might go and find in some back closet just a regular old paper bag. This is what you would get if you were downtown New York City at Christmas time and you would get a paper bag filled with chestnuts that have been roasted over the fire and there's a reason for that because once these come out we're going to immediately put them into a paper bag just like this and close up the top real good and we're going to let them sit for just about 10 minutes and the reason we do that is because it makes the shells and that inside skin come off way easier and it makes them a little less hot to handle because if they're too hot then you're going to just burn your mouth and not enjoy this amazing treat. So go find yourself a little paper bag or two because that's the next part of this journey. Ooh, <laughs> They're done, they're done! Oh my goodness, do you see this? My mouth is watering. They are absolutely perfect. I did not hear distinct pops, and partly that was because I really made those uh, cuts across them pretty distinct, if you noticed. But look at this one right here. This is a perfect example of how they kind of pop open just with the moisture inside that gets trapped. That did that all on its own, and they're all like that, super hot. So, um, ooh, I can't wait. So now our next step is, of course, we're gonna put them into the, the paper bag. And some people, like to get a good sprinkle of salt in that paper bag with them. And some people, like my mother would do, would put butter in there with them. Oh my word. If you wanna have it be decadent, some butter melted over them and some salt and you have got yourself an amazing treat. I like them just like this though. This is fantastic. All right, just a little bit more patience. This is where you could have sprinkled them with salt, even thrown in a little pat of butter and shake it up so they get salty and buttery, but you don't have to do that. But we're gonna let this sit for just 10 more minutes before we eat these. Let me say one thing though. If you're going to roast chestnuts, you're going to want to make sure you eat them while they're fresh like this. So in 10 minutes, these are ready to eat. If I decided not to, it would be very important important for me to go ahead and peel them anyway because if you wait till these get cold that inner um, paper that's around the main nut you didn't see a lot of it but one or two of them you could really see that that little brown papery surface was still covering the nut 
It is nearly impossible to get off if you were to wait until these cool down. So we're going to want to make sure that you, you roast them and you eat them within a time frame that's where they're still kind of warm, not too late or you'll regret it because they are a bear to try and peel after they get really, really cold. All right, they've been steaming in the bag for about 10 minutes now and I have hardly been able to wait. While I did wait, I did throw just a couple more in a envelope of aluminum foil onto the fire so that we can have more after these because this is not enough. <laughs> but let me just take one out and show you. So if they're done right, it should look about just like this. You'll see the, the shell just peels right off easily. And there's just a little bit of that um, that paper that I told you was on there, but because they are still hot, it peels right off nicely. And I'll peel this other side of the nut off. Okay, there you go. That's what it looks like, a little brain. <laughs> Not quite like a walnut. I can already smell it. Smells very much like a smoked salted meat or cheese. It's soft and creamy inside. Look at that, white flesh inside and Mm. It's fantastic. You're eating something substantial and creamy and nutty and naturally smoky flavored, but then the, the fireplace kind of takes it up even a notch more. Isn't that incredible? Now, I hope that this gives you hope that if you are ever in the wild, or if you're just at Christmas time and want to celebrate, but if you're ever in the wild and come across a chestnut tree, that has little porcupine looking things laying around on the ground. That's the season, that's the time. Pick some of those up and harvest those chestnuts. Bring them home. Every version of chestnut tree, whether you're in North America, Europe, um, China or Japan, those are the four places where the most chestnut trees are gonna be found that have, but all the nine varieties I think of chestnut trees are edible. So. If you find some, this is a treasure that you don't want to let go of. I can't wait for you to taste this with me. Mm -mm -mm. Now it's your turn. I hope you take the time <laughs> to share this video with someone you love. Go out and you still have time to get some chestnuts, hopefully before Christmas this year. Take the time to learn how to roast them. I hope you found it very simple the way we walked through it today. And I can't wait to hear your comments on how amazing this is if you haven't tried it before and you try it for the first time. You're going to love it. All right, it's Christmas. I hope you're thinking about what you're going to give your Savior as a birthday gift to celebrate this year. But until I see you again, will you take the time this week, especially of all weeks, this is a week that someone needs you to be their blessing. Would you go out and be a blessing to someone today? Thank you. God bless you. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>